I'm very excited about today's video, and I think you will be too. In this video, I'm teaming up with a fellow Fiverr seller and YouTuber. His name is Wayne, he's a top rated seller on Fiverr, and in this video, we're gonna be doing a bit of an interview, Fiverr Q&A style. I'll be asking him questions about his journey to success on Fiverr, questions about the types of services he sells as a seller on Fiverr, some fun facts about himself, and some general tips and advice that he can provide to new sellers that might be helpful to help you learn how to improve as a seller on Fiverr and ultimately make more money selling on Fiverr. Before I get into the interview portion of this video, make sure you're hitting that like button and subscribing to the channel. It really, really helps. Let's get into it. Question number one. Tell me about yourself. Who are you, what do you do on Fiverr, and how long have you been on the platform? Hey Mike, first thank you so much for having me on your channel. My name is Wayne Chin and I go by the Articulate Asian on Fiverr. I am a top rated seller in the voiceover category and I've been selling on the platform since March of 2016. Question number two, what's one fun fact about yourself? So a fun fact about myself is that if I come across a Donkey Kong arcade machine, which are getting pretty hard to find these days, um, on one quarter, I can stand there and play that game for a solid 40 minutes, uh, which point whomever I'm standing with has usually wandered away and left me standing there by myself. Question number three, what do you absolutely love most about Fiverr? So I love so many things about Fiverr, uh, but the biggest one for me, I think, is that in today's digital age, it really is a platform that allows you to make a lot of money online, working remotely from the comfort of your own home, doing the things you want to be doing in life. And it's really been able to allow me to change my lifestyle, to do the things that I want to do and spend more time with my family and yeah, not have to do the nine to five grind anymore. Question number four. Did you have any relevant work or educational background in the services you provide on Fiverr before starting as a seller? So I do have a degree in broadcasting and I do have an extensive theater background in acting and performance, but I wasn't ever utilizing those skills. And since joining Fiverr and doing voiceover work, it's really allowed me to bring those things back to light and um, have some kind of creativity and pride in doing the work that I do now. But really the great thing about Fiverr as a platform in general is that you don't necessarily have to have that formal kind of training to be able to be a seller in any specific category. Of course, it does help you if you do have some kind of background in what you're trying to pursue, but it doesn't mean that there isn't room for you to learn as you work. And sometimes that's really the best way to gain experience in real working situations. Question number five, is Fiverr your primary source of income? So Fiverr is one of my biggest sources of online income these days. Back when I started in 2016, I was doing voiceover work on Fiverr part-time while I still had a full-time 40-hour-a-week day job. But then after that first year, I realized that I had a talent that was marketable. There was a need for the services I was providing. And uh, in January of 2017, I made that leap to go full-time on Fiverr. And since then, I haven't looked back. Question number six. How long did it take for you to become a top-rated Fiverr seller? Oh, uh, that's a good question. So when I went full-time on Fiverr, I was still a level two seller. But you know, based on my sales status and my income from the previous year, I took a calculated risk to go full-time on the platform. And being a TRS was never on my list of things to do per se, because that's something I didn't really have control over. But then once I went full-time and I started to be able to dedicate a lot more hours and attention to my Fiverr business, I became a top-rated seller shortly thereafter, which took me about a year since joining the platform. Question number seven. What was the most common type of mistake you were making in your early days as a Fiverr seller? Oh, one of the biggest mistakes I made early was taking things too personal. And what I mean is that, you know, we as sellers always hate seeing that button, that notification that a buyer has rejected our order and requested a revision, right? Because we like to think that the services and products we're providing are top notch. And especially in my category in voiceover, it's hard not to take criticism uh, personally because it's you, it's your voice that, that you're providing. But what I didn't realize was that Fiverr is a global marketplace and that means buyers are located all over the world. So oftentimes English isn't their 
first or second or third or fourth language. So when they give you feedback like, this is bad, or you can do better, you have to understand sometimes that that's just the extent of their vocabulary. And so, you know, have that separation of taking things personally and understanding that sometimes there is a little bit of a language barrier depending on what your native tongue is and what your buyers might be. Question number eight, what has changed most in your day to day from the times where you were a level one or level two seller to now being a, a top rated seller? What's the biggest difference you've experienced? So when it comes to things like seller levels, uh, the biggest difference I think in being a top rated seller is frankly, your money gets cleared at a seven day rate. So you're able to get paid much quicker after completing an order. But regardless of any of the perks or benefits that you have from level one to level two to top rated seller with regards to uh, how many gigs you can publish and things like that. I think the biggest thing is to is to realize that as you grow in seller levels, you can scale up your business. It's more of like a status thing where as you gain levels and you grow on Fiverr, you should be scaling up your rates because you know what? Top rated sellers can charge more. A level two seller can charge more than a level one seller. And that's really because seller levels are an indicator of social proof on the platform. And at the end of the day, that's really the most important thing to grow your Fiverr business. Question number 10, what advice would you give someone who's been toying with the idea of starting up on Fiverr as a seller, but hasn't taken the plunge yet? I think my biggest tip for those of you who are considering joining the platform is to, is to just do it. There is pretty much no better time than right now to start your Fiverr journey. And in a, in a day and age where we are able to make a large amount of money digitally online, and Fiverr being one of the platforms that has the lowest barrier to entry, yeah, it's, it's a no-brainer just to join if, you, if you're thinking about starting your freelance career. There are a couple caveats, though, and I think that it's important that you start your journey right, get off on the right foot, and really put the work and effort into creating your profile, your gigs, doing your research, because you only get one chance to start on the platform. And if you don't take your time and you rush through it, you're wasting opportunities when your gigs get surfaced to potential buyers. Doing your research, understanding what the marketplace is like, formulating a business plan, those are the steps that I would take before signing up and before launching my first gig. Question number 11. What are the most lucrative categories to sell into on Fiverr? Oh man, there, you know, there are so many gigs out there. There are so many categories out there that have the potential uh, to earn a lot of money. Um, voiceover included. And I think it's hard for me to tell because I, I only sell in one category, but I think that the beauty of Fiverr as a platform is that there is no salary cap. There is no budgetary constraints to some extent, right? You can charge pretty much whatever it is that you want to charge that you think is an appropriate wage for your services. And so in my category specifically, there is a wide range of different sellers at different price points. And each of those price points fits a specific need and a specific buyer. But you know, you're not you're not limited to what you can charge. It really boils down to you personally figuring out how much money you need to make on the platform and then tailoring your services and price points to meet that expectation and then having a plan to grow and exceed that year after year. Question number 12. This is probably the question that's on every new seller's mind. What advice would you give a new seller who's having a little bit of trouble getting their first couple of orders? What's my biggest advice for people who are having a difficult time with their first order? I think one of the most important things to consider when you are struggling to get your first order on Fiverr, and if you've implemented all of the suggestions that people like Mike and I make on our YouTube channels, I think what you really need to do is reevaluate your own skill set. And really be honest about what it is that you're offering, where you are in your professional career, and make sure that you are pricing yourself accordingly. You know, I'll tell you, when I first started on voiceover, there was no way that I could be charging the rates that I do today. And that was really because I didn't have any social proof on the platform. I was still relatively new to doing voiceover work. And so subsequently, I had to charge an appropriate discounted rate to build up those skill sets, to build up those reviews before I could start scaling up my business. And so I think one of the issues that a lot of new sellers encounter is that they want to make money today. You know, we live in a world of instant gratification. And the reality is that when you start anything, it's more of a marathon than a sprint. And the same is true for Fiverr. 
you really need to have the patience to put in that unpaid work at the beginning to set up your services and do your research and grow your skills and then understand that as those develop and grow, you will reach that big payoff, but that might not be for a number of weeks, months, even years. Again, Mike, thank you so much for having me and uh, keep up the great work on your channel. All right, so that's it for the interview today. I hope this video was super helpful to give some insights into the world of what it's like to be a top rated seller. Wayne, I really appreciate you participating in this video. I think you have a lot of awesome insights and tips that you can share to new sellers looking to grow, become successful, and make a lot of money on the Fiverr platform. Wayne's obviously someone who's been killing it as a seller on Fiverr. So the idea with this video was to do some Q&A to give you some insights and tips from a top rated seller to help you stay motivated and you know, stay inspired to keep working towards growing your Fiverr business because it does take time. Fiverr is a marathon, it's not a sprint. There are gonna be a lot of times where you look at yourself and say, is this just too hard? If you stick with it, have a learner's mindset, are continually trying to learn, improve, and deliver great value to your clients, I have a pretty good feeling you're gonna make it and things are gonna work out. So stick in there. Thank you for joining us on this interview Q&A style video. And until next time, cheers.